while you're looking at some incredible images. They were shared on Twitter by the American astronaut Scott Kelly while in space. Now, after 340 days, Kelly and NASA are preparing for his return to Earth. But the mission does not end once Kelly lands. His scientific findings will contribute to the future of all space travel. Well, our next guest knows all about returning from outer space. He's done it twice. Former Canadian astronaut Dr. Dave Williams has spent over 600 hours in space. He also holds a record of 17 hours and 47 minutes performing spacewalks. He now practices as a medical doctor. Dr. Williams joins us now here in studio. So, Dave, thank you for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. You know, it is such a rare privilege to be up in space. When you think about all the humans have been there, it is a small number. What's it like in the final days, as, as astronaut Kelly is dealing with right now, what's it like to know that your time in space is coming to an end? I think it's a bittersweet moment. You know the mission is coming to an end. You're looking forward to getting home and seeing your family again. So it's hard. You're saying goodbye to space, but you're really excited looking forward to getting back on the planet. Forward, looking forward to coming back to the planet, uh, in part because, as you say, you, you miss life here, but it can't be easy to adjust back to life on Earth. You, you're living in zero gravity for so many hundreds of days. What's it like to re-acclimatize to Earth's gravity and life here on terra firma? So the best analogy to recovering from space flight is to think about bed rest. In fact, NASA does bed rest studies, and right now as the CEO of South Lake Regional Health Centre, we have a lot of patients who are in bed in the hospital, but we need to prepare them to be able to go home. Same thing when you're coming back from being in space for almost a year. You have the problems of losing bone density, muscle wasting, you get weaker. When you stand up, you're going to feel lightheaded. So when Scott returns to Earth, there's no question he's going to feel gravitationally challenged. And what does that physically feel like? Is that just fatigue or is, does your body actually feel physical pain as you get used to gravity again? There's no pain at all, but you feel like your limbs are heavy. You know, when you try and lift your arm up, it feels like it weighs more than uh, you think it has. In the past, I remember reaching down on the mid-deck of the space shuttle to pick up my helmet. Intellectually, I knew it weighed less than 10 pounds, but it felt like it weighed about 25 pounds or so. So these are changes that he'll be experiencing the first 24, 48 hours, but the changes will persist for a period of time, and it's going to take him many months to be able to get back to his previous Earth condition. Well, that's the physical challenge of returning back to Earth. What about the mental challenge? You know, in space, you don't encounter traffic. You don't encounter hundreds of people as you walk down the street. You don't even encounter a barking dog in the distance. What's it like mentally to come back to Earth after being essentially with a limited number of people for so long? So, you know, you've been in space with a small group of people for a period of time. Coming back to Earth, you get a chance to see your loved ones again. You get a chance to simply smell the air. To be able to see the sunset and sunrise, not every uh, 45 minutes like you do in space, but you know every 24 hours, and I think that's truly remarkable. Just simply being back on the planet, and getting a chance to spend time with loved ones and friends, and being able to go out in the woods and enjoy the beauty of uh, our planet from uh, the surface of the Earth. Do you get melancholy standing on Earth and looking up to the sky when you return to the Earth? I have zero G moments. You know, on Friday night I was at the Toronto showing of Last Man on the Moon. And when you look up and you see the moon and you look up and you see the space station going by and you remember what it was like being on board the International Space Station helping build it, you realize how incredibly profound the human exploration of space really is. I can't imagine just what that is like. Uh, that said, you know, it's interesting because there will be tests that are conducted as well here on Earth once uh, uh, astronaut uh, Kelly comes back. And one of them is, of course, Scott Kelly has a twin brother, Mark Kelly, who is also uh, an American astronaut. He's married to Gabby Giffords, the U.S. Uh, Congresswoman. And they're going to examine Scott Kelly, who's been up in space, alongside with his twin brother, Mark Kelly, who's been on Earth for so long now. Why are they going to be doing that? So scientifically, whenever we do experiments, you always wonder, can we get a control? And a control being a, an individual or a situation that's not exposed to the variable. In this case, Scott is exposed to the variable of space, the microgravity environment. His brother's not. So we can compare all those changes that take place in Scott's body to Mark to see whether or not space is causing those changes. And in fact, not only can we do that, we can compare to Scott's previous six-month mission in space. All of this is important because the the lessons we're going to learn will help prepare us to be able to go to Mars and that in and of itself is really exciting. Is that the ultimate goal at this point, Mars? At, th at this point, the destination hasn't been uh, stated. The destination is beyond Earth orbit. My personal belief would be send humans to Mars. It'll be an incredible scientific mission, not only from the human perspective, but trying to understand whether life once existed on another planet in the solar system.
Okay, I'm, I'm, we're running out of time. I, I could talk for you for on and on, but before we go, uh, what is the state of the Canadian uh, space program right now? Will we see any astronauts going up anytime soon? Canadian space program is in great shape. We have two astronauts, David Saint-Jacques and Jeremy uh, Hansen, and they're getting ready to be able to go fly in space over the next uh, five years or so. We're very excited about it, and it's great to see uh, Canada as one of the major spacefaring nations of the world. Well, you know, thank you very much for your time. I know it is precious, and it is an honor to speak with you. So thank you, Dr. Williams. My pleasure. And that is Dr. Dave Williams, a former Canadian astronaut, and he joined us here in studio on Terra Firma.